What? What is up, DNL family? I'll be coming to you live here just in a few minutes. What's up, DNL family? How are we doing today? It is the most crappiest day out there, isn't it? It is. It's damp. It's raining. It's dreary. It's it's just one of those days you just want to stay in the house, watch a good movie, have a good cup of coffee, mm, and enjoy just a relaxing day. It's terrible. We thought about going out this morning. We're going to go out, maybe possibly go up to the gun show, but decided not to go. I think it's going to be one of those lazy Sundays. But what I did want to come to you today is I want to talk a little bit about dehumidification and humidification. And what's the differences? And how does that affect you as a homeowner in your own home? So let's start off with air conditioning. So what is the primary purpose of air conditioning? Well, it's to cool us off, right? Yeah, it's to make our house more comfortable that we can actually um, be comfortable in our own home. But what is the what does the air conditioner actually do? Everybody thinks, well, it just it puts cold air in our, in our house. Well, it does. But there's a real, real important factor in there that a lot of people don't talk about. And when you do talk about that, everybody looks at you with a third eyeball. Well, what does air conditioning actually do in our home? It actually dehumidifies. So what does that mean to you? Well, picture a 95 degree day outside and 95 degrees in our relative humidity is over 60% or 80% or 100%. As long as it's above the mark of our normal comfortability, we are always, our bodies work off of humidity. If it's high humidity levels, we start to sweat. If it's low, it could be hot and low humidity levels and we don't sweat. We don't feel uncomfortable, right? Same thing in our homes. What we, what we do in air conditioning is we actually dehumidify the air. By dehumidifying the air, we reduce the dew point and the humidity levels in your home. And by doing that, we actually are cooling the space and the air off. So in air condition, as we transfer the heat from indoor to outdoors, we're actually, before we can even do that, we have to take the humidity levels to a safe point in order to stop cooling, right? I know it sounds complicated, but it's really not. So if you were to leave your air conditioning off on a hot summer day and come home and it's super, super hot in your house, let's say it's like the, therm the thermometer says 90 degrees and our relative humidity outside is over 90% and you wonder why it takes your house five to six, maybe even seven hours to cool down. Well, that's the reason why we don't get immediate satisfaction out of dehumidify, uh, cooling the air based on our air conditioners. That's why we always say, I always say to my, my customers and everybody else I deal with, set it and forget it. Because if you set it, it will maintain that humidity level. It will maintain that cooling level. If you do a setback or you turn it off when you leave the house because you know you're not going to be in there and you don't want it to run because your electricity bill is going to be too high, you'll get a greater electricity bill coming home and turning that thermostat to 72 from the off than what it will be as if you just set it and forget it. So what do we start doing? We start dehumidifying the air first. We have to take the moisture out of the air. We can't cool the air unless the moisture is gone. We have to pull the moisture out of the air. So how is, it's very technical how it happens and to go on that long thing. Um, basically that's what we do when we air condition, we pull the humidity levels out of the air through refrigeration, through, through lay in and sensible heat. 
that's how we that's how we pull the humidity out. Once we pull it out, we pull that heat out of your home and dehumidify it, we actually start to cool the air down. Then the air returns to a normal level based on humidity levels. So it could be 85 degrees outside and your humidity level is low, then it won't take as much to cool your home. So that's how air conditioning starts to work. Now, you say to me, okay, DNL guy, what about the winter time? Well, what does heat do? If we dehumidify in the summertime, what do we do in the wintertime? Most of us don't do anything. But what does heat do? Heat dries the air out. And it causes problems. It causes problems in our health. It causes problems in our homes. It causes problems, um, a lot of different problems. It, it, there's, it's a magnitude of problems that it can cause. Lack of humidity, if you remember, if you walk across the carpet and you touch the light switch and boom, you get, you get a electrical shock or you're wearing a sweater and you walk across that and you get shocked, well, that's what happens. That's telling you that your relative humidity levels in your home is too low. So in heating mode, we dry the air up. So if you wake up in the morning with a stuffy nose or you wake up in the morning really dry feeling, that's the reason why. It, you know, it affects people's allergies, it affects people's breathing, it affects people's sinuses. We physically dry the air out when we either run a gas furnace, a heat pump with electric backup, oil heat, any, any type of heating system you have in your home, we dry the air out when in heating mode. So it's a reverse effect in wintertime than what it is in the summertime. So how do you fix that? Well, there are things out there that do fix it and they're called humidifiers. And the humidifier, what that does is it actually blows a mist of water into our ductwork. And as that air is coming across that mist, it picks up those droplets and brings it into our home. Now you say, well, it's picking up. No, it's, it's not really taking the water and transform, for, transforming it from your ductwork as like a rainforest in your house. No, it's not like that. It makes the air a lot, it, it moisturizes the air is what it does. It stops it from being as dry. So by the time it comes out your vents, it's not as dry as what it would be as if we didn't have a humidifier in there. So humidifiers are very, very important in the winter time to not have such the dry air in our homes. Uh, humidifiers work great in the winter time. We want to hold probably a 30 to 45% relative humidity in our homes. And that pretty much keeps everything at the minimum standard. If we have hardwood floors in our home and we don't keep that relative humidity. You'll start to hear them creak. You'll start to, you may even get some warping in the boards. Um, a lot of people don't know that, that it, it affects a lot of things in our crown moldings. It affects our uh, drywall. It affects the taping joints on the drywall. There's a lot of things that it affects on, you know, humidity levels in our home. And we've been into a couple lately. We've seen a lot. I mean, when I say a lot, we have come across, we developed a, well, we didn't develop the program, but we offered an indoor air quality test. And what that indoor air quality test, it tests for contaminants in the air. It tests for VOC, which is vertical <laughs> organic chemicals in, in the air. It tests the relative humidity and it tests the dew point inside the home. And what we're finding is a lot of homes that were built and are built that we're finding that they didn't take into consideration the humidity levels in the air during heating season or the lack of. And they didn't take into consideration the relative humidity that they had to take out of the house in the summertime. 
So what happens is the air condition works overtime to try to remove the humidity and it cannot. There is not enough. They size it based on what their, um, you know, they call it a manual J load. But they're not basing it on relative temperature and relative humidity. Now, Virginia has been a heat pump state for a very, very long time. It used to be an oil state. They had a lot of oil and propane and stuff. But a lot of people are converting over the, to heat pumps. And heat pumps normally run, you know, up to about 35 degrees outside. And then it needs a supplemental heat. You need something else to catch up with it and run and, and give you heat. So what do they do? Is they put electric strip heat inside your air handlers. And that electric strip heat is just like a toaster. If you put down the lever on the toaster and you look inside there, you see all those little red heating coils that toast your bread? Well, that's exactly what's in your air handler when it goes and switches over to electric strip heat. So the two reasons why that it would switch over to that, there's actually three, but I'll go with two. The third one is user um, interaction, basically, and I'll explain that in a second. But the first reason is that the unit has to go, the outdoor unit has to go into a defrost mode. That defrost mode actually defrosts the coils on the outdoor unit so they don't freeze. Now. This can get really technical and we can go into a, a long aspirated conversation about this, but refrigerant inside the copper piping that is, you know, the, the, whether it's R22 or 410A makes no difference. The saturated temperature of that refrigerant is extremely cold. Um, and what happens is in the summertime, our outdoor unit is our condensing units where we pull the heat out of the house and extract it out through the condenser outside well in the in the winter time it's just the opposite on a heat pump what we do is we extract the heat from the outside and bring that inside the house and you're like ah, how do they do that it's based on the state of the refrigerant we basically switch the flow of refrigerant from one direction to the other. So we have a flow of refrigerant going one way in heat and cooling mode, and we have what we call a reversing valve that acts as a traffic cop that now has to reverse itself and send the refrigerant in a different direction. So that, that's how we actually you know, switch from heating to cooling mode. But what's interesting is, we talked about the defrost, when the coil outside reaches a point of saturation where it's about to freeze, the unit has a sensor on there that basically tells it, hey, we need to go into defrost for X amount of time, and defrost is based on time and temperature. How long the unit ran based on, how long the unit ran based on how cold the temperature is of the outdoor coil. And that is determined to a defrost control board on the outdoor unit that will put it into defrost mode. When it goes into defrost mode, it sends a signal into the indoor air handler and says, hey, look, we are no longer producing any heat from outside. We now need to put a supplemental heat on. So then they turn the electric strip heat on just like your toaster, and that extremely dries the air out. It's, it's raw energy, raw uh, kilowatts per hour that it's using, and it dries the air out tremendously. So in the wintertime, if you, if, you, know, you suffer from basic allergies or stuffy nose, or you wake up and your nose is all dry and you get a bloody nose, or you're getting that electrical shock going across your carpeting and when you touch something electrical, that's the reason why. It's we dry the air out so much that we rely on what they call humidifiers in the wintertime. And these humidifiers are installed right in your ductwork. It does require a water source. So it has to be close to a water pipe to where it can be hooked up to. 
and it modulates the amount of humidity it puts back into the air. And again, we go back to that 35 to 45% window is where we want to be. I like to see them around 38, 39, you know, in the middle of those, those two. You could be 35 to 45 and pick the middle. I'd like to see them somewhere around 38%. Um, I think that runs a really good humidity level in a home. Not too much, but not and not not enough. But humidifiers are a really big key when it comes to wintertime. So if you don't have one in your home, you might want to think about if you have these common issues that arise from you know the um, the humidity the lack of humidity in your home. You hear your hardwood floors cracking when you walk on them or they creak or they, you know, um, because what happens with wood, it swells and it contracts. It swells and it contracts. So you start to hear the cracking of the wood or the creaking of the wood, the squeaking noise when you walk on it. That's a couple reasons could be, well, one of the reasons could be very well that the humidity levels in your home have dropped down below a specific point. And if you remember, if you had the hardwood floors installed, you remember the contractor, whoever did it, basically told you that we had to put this hardwood floor into your home and let it acclimate to the temperature. Well, why do they do that? Because again, the hardwood extra expands and contracts, expands and contracts. It gets to a point where the, the indoor temperature, it no longer has to expand and contract based on that. It acclimates itself to the indoor temperature of your home. Now remember that. That was the temperature when they were installed. Do you always keep that temperature year round? Most of us don't. And this is why it's important to understand that this is why a lot of hardwood floors and stairs and, and, and that not, you know, get ruined is because we don't maintain that right humidity level in the home. So that's why it's important that in the wintertime that your HVAC system has a humidifier on it because you can maintain that not only for your health purposes, but you also can maintain that for your home's purposes. Um, we've seen a tremendous, and, and, I'm, and when I say this, a tremendous, I get a lot of calls from customers. I have a very, very high humidity in my home. And, and there's there's a lot of reasons for that, but you have to be specific and nail down to why. Why is that humidity level? Is it lack of insulation? Is it lack of airflow? What, what is infiltrating from the outside? You know, there's no easy answer to this. You know, it, there, it takes some, you know, we had a customer that called us and said, look, my ductwork is sweating. We just had the house renovated two years ago and the contractor that did it guaranteed. Well, what happened was the contractor that did it prior used uninsulated ductwork. And you cannot use uninsulated ductwork in an unconditioned space. You just can't. Remember, unconditioned means it's not heated, it's not cooled, it's flat stagnant to the temperature in there. So it's between your floors, it's one temperature. If it's in an attic, it's another temperature. If it's in the basement, it's another temperature. You cannot use uninsulated ductwork in a home that or a space that is unconditioned. So my fair warning to that when I say that is too, people that have unfinished basements, listen carefully when I say this, people that have unfinished basements and you bought the house and now you want to finish the basement, you are, unless you encapsulate that ductwork and insulate it, you are going to have problems. You are going to have problems with humidity in the chases of the ductwork because it is unconditioned space when you encapsulate it and then you throw 42, 50, let's say 42 out the throat of the air handler 
and 55 to 58 degrees air down the throat of the supply ductwork. Well, when hot air hits cold air, it is going to condensate. Doesn't matter what you do, it's going to condensate. It is going to create tremendous amount of damage to your home. Tremendous. And if you haven't a new home built, we just did one. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you right now, we did a new construction. We did not use any flex ducking. It was all hard ducking. Yes, it costs a little bit more money. But the fact of the matter is, it, it has to be sealed and it has to be insulated. If it's in an unconditioned space. If you're conditioned in the space, then fine. There's, then it doesn't have to be a... Because now your temperature of your ductwork and the temperature of the surrounding area is the same. It's the same exact temperature. You cannot condensate if the air and the temperature is the same. But when you have 48 or 49 degree air coming out of your ductwork and you have a dew point in your home that is above that, you're going to get condensation. You're going to get it. And it's going to create thousands and thousands of dollars worth of damage. So dehumidification and humidification is very, very important. They do make single ductwork humidifiers that can be put in there for the winter time. They also make whole house humidifiers that work um, for the whole house. Um, just a lot better. They're, they're a little more expensive, don't get me wrong, but in the long run, it will do the whole, it's a whole house dehumidifier, not just one single ductwork. But a lot of people that have the, you know, Honeywell makes them, um, and I'm not promoting Honeywell, I'm not promoting April Air. I mean, we, we prefer the April Air over the Honeywells. I, just a personal preference. Some people like the Honeywells better. Uh, we just, we've just done the April Airs. You know, they make a 500, which is a bypass, or 600, 500 and 600 that are bypass models. What that means is it bypasses from return to supply. And then they make a 700, um, and, and I think an 800 might be on that list that are true um, non-bypassed humidifiers. So that's what I wanted to bring to you today. I hope everybody else enjoys the rest of their day. I know I'm on 23 minutes on a little bit of study on Hope you got a lot of this video. If you did, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel right there at the bottom. Give us a, give me a thumbs up. Give me a like on the video if you if you got some enjoyment out of it or some knowledge, and if if that uh, helps you out in any way. And if you got any questions, you know, you can always give us a call. You can vi visit us at dnlguy.com or dnlmechanical.com. You can send us an email at dnlmechanical at gmail.com. Um, you can always get a hold of us. We're on Facebook. You can send me a message on Facebook through DNL Mechanical Services. We're, we're always here to help and answer any questions that you have. So, happy Sunday to you. Enjoy this crappy weather because that's what it is crappy weather. Um, go watch a movie, play some cards with your family, maybe some board games you want to bring out. Um, I know I'm sitting here in my, but I'm in my office with no heat on. So, it is a little chilly, probably 58 degrees in there. But that's okay. The DNL guy can, we can handle that 58 degrees. Guys, love you guys. Hope you got a lot of information out of this. We'll be doing a couple more here soon. But thanks for all your support. We greatly appreciate our customers. Oh, and by the way, special announcement. If you're on this video, last year we did, um, we did a couple things around Thanksgiving. And we had a huge, huge success on it. So what we're going to do starting November 1st is every week we're going to give away a free turkey. It's the gobble to you wobble. It's coming back. Yeah. Gobble to you wobble is coming back. So if you're on this video or you see this video, stay tuned because uh, I'm going to release shortly gobble to you wobble. Um, we, we had huge success last year. We gave away... Three turkeys because Thanksgiving fell in that week, but we gave away three turkeys for three weeks. 
um, to families that, that participated in it. Um, we're going to do the same thing this year. So gobble to you wobble. Um, you'll see the link on our web. I'm going to post it on our website. You go there, register. We're going to pick a name every week. We're going to have some fun with this. We'll pick a name every week, and that family wins the, uh, the gobble to you wobble turkey. All right? We love you guys. We will see you soon. Enjoy your Sunday with your family. This is the DNL guy, and I'm out.